In this video, we will talk about how you can break into tech and land your first coding job. There has never been a better time to do so because the industry is absolutely booming right now. Software developer is one of the most in-demand careers. One in 10 jobs is going to the tech sector here in the UK. The average tech worker makes 66% more than the non-tech worker. Desperate need for more software developers. Yes, that's right. And I'm even going to chat to some friends who made the switch to tech from retail, teaching, and hospitality to see what they are earning right now and how they got there. So five years ago, I was earning 35k as a teacher and then I made the switch to tech and now I'm earning hundreds. If you want to know the answer to that, then better stick around because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly why there's so much demand for tech in the first place, whether you need a degree or not, how to learn the skill of coding as fast as possible, and most importantly, how you can secure your first ever coding job. Give me one second, sir. There used to be a time where companies, they would focus on doing what they do best. If they were in the service industry, they would be providing five-star customer service. I had a look at your bank account, sir, and I'm afraid that we're gonna have to shut it down. I can't tell you the reason why, but please be assured that more banking customer service is at the heart of what we do. Or if they weren't in the service industry and they would be in the market department, they will be focused on how to build the greatest product on the market. And outsourcing and offshoring all the IT to IT companies, giving them the flexibility to focus on what they do best. But that has changed. But it's now 2021 and we live in a completely different world, accelerated by the pandemic. And digital and tech is at the heart of every single thing that we do. And as Forbes points out, no government, no charity, no organization can render its services or even market a product without leveraging technology. And I want to put a key emphasis on the word efficiency, because when most people think about tech, they think about consumer facing apps like YouTube. Twitter or Instagram. Well, in fact, those apps only cover 1% of the world of tech. Tech is in literally everywhere. It's in every single gadget and every single service. In fact, it's because of tech apps like Zoom that enabled us to be working from home. All right, team, I'm just gonna share my screen right now. Can you guys see my screen? Well, I think you are on mute. Leveraging technology across the board is now standard. And as Andreessen Horowitz, one of the world's biggest tech investors puts it, the distinction between companies that make tech and those that use it has become irrelevant. And across every single industry, companies now no longer see IT as a siloed department where those IT geek work. So now that you know why there is so much demand for people who can code, let's see if you really need a degree. All right, sir, thank you for holding. Have you tried to reset your password? So one question I get all the time is, do I need a degree to break into tech? And I can tell you right now that no, you don't need a degree to break into tech. So if you had plans to spend the next four years of your life and waste over 30,000 pounds to break into tech and spend on a degree, I can tell you right now that now, in all seriousness, you don't need a degree. In fact, half of the people I know who work in tech don't have a degree at all. And if my word isn't strong enough, then have a look at these articles from tech giants stating themselves that not having a tech degree won't be a barrier to work for them. So now that you know that you don't need a degree, what you do need though is to learn how to code. But the first step will be to select your pathway, similar to how in medicine, you need to specialize in a specific medical field. In order to do so, you need to understand the difference between software engineering and web and app development. Whenever you hear the word software, then think about the applications and programs that you have to download on your computer, like for example, Microsoft Word. In most cases, you can use these programs without having any internet connection. Think about web development as the websites you have to either access via a browser or an app on your phone like youtube.com. My advice to you is to get into web and app development due to a the demand on the job market and b its ease of learning in comparison to your traditional software engineering. So the first step is to decide whether you want to become a back-end developer or a front-end developer. And I can already see you looking at me confused. Well, in order to explain 
explain that, think of building an app like completing a house from scratch. If you want to build a website similar to building a property, you need to start with the foundations. And in the world of property development, that starts with the layering of the concrete walls, the flooring, the water supply, the electricity supply. And in the world of tech, these are called your backend developers, the folks who build the backend layers and the data and the algorithms that you can't see yourself when interacting on the website. And you need modern construction workers to complete their property because you also need people that can work in the inside of the property, like your wallpaper artist, like your painters, like your carpenters, and also you need interior designers. And what these folks do is they work on the inside of the property to make it presentable and to make it look good. And in the world of tech, these are called your front-end developers. They turn those visuals, they turn that data into beautiful looking websites that you as the user can interact with. Now, the next step is to learn how to code. And the best place to get started for free is YouTube. And there are so many great tutorials on this platform. Now, the reason why I recommend not signing up with a expensive bootstrap straight away is because you might not even like coding and therefore you should leverage YouTube to test out the wars. Now, at this stage, you might be asking, well, should I learn front-end development or should I learn back-end development? And to that, I would say everyone is different. So just go on YouTube and dabble your toes in both. For and development start off with learning html then css and then go to plain javascript for backend development i would choose python as it's a great beginner friendly programming language personally for both i would highly recommend traversa media or the net ninja youtube accounts now if you still think that coding is something that you'd enjoy doing now is the time to join a bootcamp but do make sure that when you are selecting a bootcamp that you make sure that they give you a structured path with mentorship and provide you with opportunities to network with future employers and career support. Make sure it's not something crazy like an eight-week bootcamp because you can't become proficient in just eight weeks. Personally, I think it will take you about six months to get to a good enough level to land junior roles. If there was one thing that separated the people that I know who actually landed their first ever junior coding role really quickly was that they learned and built projects in public. And basically what I mean by that is that you document and publicize your entire learning journey on a daily or weekly basis on the internet. And there are a few reasons why that really works. First of all, it's a natural human bias to root for the underdog who's working hard for his or her come up. Secondly, in a world full of competition, it may Makes you stand out from the crowd and luckily for you the majority of that crowd are all hiding behind anonymous profiles and keeping a low profile and finally in the world of tech nothing proves that you know what you're doing more than being able to show a list of projects that you built yourself and put out to the world even if they aren't original building in public and having a great list of projects that you worked on and put out on the internet is worth 100 times more than a degree or having a great CV Interior designers hang out on Pinterest. You can find photographers mainly posting on Instagram and comedians these days on TikTok. But the best place to connect with the tech community is on Twitter. Twitter has basically become what LinkedIn should have been and it can do wonders for you in regards to connecting with other tech professionals who can open doors for you. And I highly recommend having a public Twitter account where you interact with other tech professionals, promote your own work, even if you think that's not good enough. As I promise you, if you keep at it consistently, someone will open a door for you. Do try to add value before you expect value back. And remember that most people are willing to help you if you approach them in a nice way. I hope this video has been useful. If you did, please let me know in the comments below and do share this video with your friends. And if you haven't already, do check out these videos that can help you in your journey of becoming a programmer. Until next time, take care. I'll catch you in the next one.